Big blowout, dude. That's what you got us going with last time, dude. And now we're on a roll, baby. Here we go. The Nets, big win, Dave. What you got? One twelve to one hundred two. It was a hell of a game, but let's just you know give credit where credit's due. We got fifty six points between Josh Giddy and Shea Gildas Alexander. Oh my fucking god, these two guys are amazing. But let's just let's just give Josh some major you know credit right here. He closed out in that fourth quarter. He made the, uh, a great fadeaway. I call that Dirk fadeaway that he did. Got another Dirk fadeaway there. Uh, he got an assist to Baisley. He may have traveled. Who knows? Uh, it doesn't really matter because the assist happened. And you watch Josh go for 28-9-9. I mean, <laughs> what else do you want? Just a beautiful game by Josh. Yeah, I mean, he loves playing in New York. Sure does. And goes out there and puts up a big game. He had a huge game from Dort. And on a team where we're used to seeing lots and lots of contributions from the other guys, we really didn't get a lot from many other guys like there was contributions on the defensive end there were contributions in hitting shots but really this was door shea and giddy who really w- were able to like lock in and specifically that fourth quarter by by giddy he put up 11 points in the fourth he was mm. attacking downhill they didn't have an answer for him he didn't quit he made sure that they understood the entire time that he was a, something that they had to deal with but you know they were still focused on on shea and they weren't able to really adjust their approach but Huge, huge, huge closing game. Um, and now we came into this road trip and we were hoping to go 500, right? But that was a hope. And we go three and one, and it takes a historic record to beat us in that one. We're on a roll, baby. Yeah, we're playing some amazing basketball. It's fun to watch uh, these guys as a team. I, I, I watch the Nets because I love Richard Jefferson. Um, I've always uh, loved watching him play. Uh, he's, he's a great guy and I, you know, I'm curious as to see how, how he's been doing. So I watched the Nets, uh, broadcast and I, I gotta say, I, I, the way that he talked about the thunder, it wasn't like this, you know, blah, you know, I love this team. They hustle this much. It's like, if you don't come ready to play against the thunder, your ass is getting beat. You're like, you're getting beat. You're going home and you're going to be disappointed because if you don't come ready to play for the thunder against the thunder and when the Nets went up by 10 points in that third quarter and before we went on a 20, uh, 29 to uh, like seven run, uh, you know, like it was like Rich Jefferson's like, yep, this is how you put away the thunder. You just keep on the pedal to the metal. And then all of a sudden, boom, you can tell like the Nets just hit a wall. And it was because of the way we played defense and uh, Rich, Richard Jefferson kind of you know touched on this. Like, you know, some of these guys look really, really tired out there and it's, all those guys look really tired. You don't play only seven guys against us, or you just don't do that. You know, like Jock Vaughn knew that, and he played out there. He played a good, you know, I guess four guys you can consider he played. But, you know, like, I, I don't know, man. Like, it, it's a whole new game, the way that teams are playing against us now. They're, they're recognizing that this is not a typical team. You're not going to sit here and, and just discount the thunder because what we're doing right now is for real. Yeah, it was interesting to hear Jacques Vaughn talking before the game and talking about the matchup against the Thunder and what we were going to try to do and, like, the amount of respect he had for us. But all of that said, it didn't matter. Like, Mm -hmm. we came in and we were able to do what we wanted to do because what we're trying to do, a lot of it's on effort and tempo and playing with defense and getting out and running, attacking the paint. These are things we can control. Then we start finding ways to, you know, get the ball in the basket, we get on a run. But, yeah, we took control of the game early. They came out, and they were able to get that 10-point lead. But then it was like, well, I think we cut it to five going into the fourth quarter. And then the fourth quarter, we just continued to put the pressure on them. And by the end, they weren't. it wasn't even a, a close game at the end. It was a 10-point game. They weren't fouling, and we were just walking away with it. Yeah, and there was a point in the game where I was watching, and I, I just saw – what felt like the Brooklyn Nets get every single offensive rebound. Yeah. And it was really frustrating. They got, it was like, uh, I don't know, they got like six and three possessions or seven and three possessions. And I'm just watching it. It's like, this is really frustrating. And I'm like, we're getting killed on the offensive board. And when I went to the stat sheet, I realized that, you know, even with that seven and, th- you know, three possessions, they still only beat us by three offensive rebound in the game. The hustle that we played with, even at the end of the in the fourth quarter, was truly spectacular. At Baisley, he got a couple offense rebounds. I believe at one of them was that fourth Dude. quarter when he was getting some PT time. 
Yeah. Some playing time then. Huge, um, huge, huge minutes by Baisley in the playing fourth. time. Yeah, you know, and and here's the thing about it is I I love the way that he's running up and down the court. He's hustling. There's 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 no like uh, drag with him anymore. Yeah. Does it make he sense? Those like, closing you know, minutes, man. He really did. Yeah, and 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 we need him doing that. And 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 that's what our biggest issue has been with with Dort and the way he's played is that all that hustle that the entire team plays with. We want to see everyone play with that. And when one player is not playing like that, it, it stands out. And so now that we're seeing Baisley do that in, in the 18 minutes uh, this game and, and last game and the game before that he's starting to get, um, you know, or is it, uh, actually it was uh, just a Chicago game that he got his playing time. But we're, I, I'm really impressed with it. And, you know, Lindy Waters has some big minutes. Kendrick Williams had some charges. I think he had two charges. Um, just some Flying around the court. minutes by these guys, man, yeah. in the, on our bench. It wasn't yeah, three all for points four like they from usually Isaiah did. Joe from deep. And yeah. plus, he had, I think he had a big block and – he was out there just making big plays defensively. He had a block and a steal. And, yep. um, yeah, like I said, three for four. So what else do you want from him? Yeah, and it's just, you know, again, it wasn't the scoring that these guys were doing. It was everything else. It was the offensive boards. Our, our um, bench had four offensive boards. They had, you know, a ton of defensive boards, a ton of assists. I mean, five assists for this this second team to me is, is, is big because uh, – you know, I, I like to see seven, but really five when you get three from Baisley. I mean, to me, that's big. You know, mm -hmm. you get one from Waters and one from Kenny Hustle. And, you know, we had a few, uh, three steals from that second team. We had uh, five blocks from that second team. Five of our seven blocks was from that second team. You know, this is the type of stuff that we need from our second team. If they're not going to put up um, points, is at least they're going out there, um, balls to the wall, and doing what it takes. And it wasn't that we didn't score a lot of points, we got past 20. Um, but, you know, we've been able to rely on this team to get us 30-plus points um, many, many times, and it wasn't just going to happen tonight. Yeah, man, and we've already mentioned Dort a little bit, but we got to give him a lot of credit because he continued to shoot the ball. So he shot five dude. for seven from deep, um, and it was really impressive just the way that he continued to be aggressive. And we've heard a lot of people who consider themselves smart Thunder fans talking and doing the whole, like, um, Russ and KD thing where they're counting how many Russ, um, shots that, that Dort has. And they're like, do you really want the fourth most efficient guy taking the third most st shots on the team and blah, 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 that type of thing. And I understand like where they're coming from. They're just flat out wrong. Okay. We need Dort to be aggressive. And some days you're going to have days like this. And some days they're not going to be like this, but when they're like this, then that's why you need him to continue to be aggressive. And when they're not like this, he's not going to shoot as many shots. And if he does, he's going to create those extra possessions that he does. So we look at it like a player like Baisley. You know, if he can go out there and create a possession for each missed shot he has, then every missed shot is fine. You know, if he misses three or four, he gets a sure. couple blocks, gets a couple offensive rebounds, and then we're good. Like, that's a good thing. Dort is the same way. So mm -hmm. when he get, puts up 22 and he covers all of his missed shots plus some on extra possessions for the team – like that's a big help for winning. So it's easy to look at his points, but a lot of the stuff that works out best for Dort is kind of like Kenny Hustle, like you were saying, it doesn't show up in the stat sheet. And you got to just understand that when you get the good and like you're not dealing with any of the bad, like mm. it's time to recognize we've got a special, special player. It's not every game is going to be great, but his timing is perfect for where this team is going. Absolutely, man. And it's so shot selection that I look at with shooters and guys that like to shoot the ball is if they're forcing shots, if they're taking uh, unopened threes, um, if they're taking, um, you know, uh, fadeaway jump shots off the dribble, different things like this that you see and you're like, okay, that's bad shots. You don't want them taking that. Very few times do I see Dort taking a bad shot. He's driving to the hole hard. Uh, if he's missing a, a, a layup right at the rim, I don't consider that a bad shot because eventually when those start going in, I mean, it's all going to click and those will start going in guys. He's not going to be missing these, these contested layups very much uh, longer. He's going to figure it out and he's going to figure it out fast. Right? So the shot selection that Dort's doing is typically a very good high IQ shot selection. So I, you know, knew that these games are going to come where he's putting up 20 plus points and he's making things look easy because the way that he understands the game and saying, okay, I, I, my shot's not falling, so I'm not going to take, you know, six three-pointers or seven three-pointers. I'm going to take, you know, three three-pointers, and maybe I can hit one. 
and that's cool. You know, like I love the way that he's able to understand where his game is going. Um, attacking the hole, he got to the hole really well today and got fouled a bunch, uh, three times to the foul line. I like this. He needs to do this more, and the refs need to call it because he's so physical and so big. I don't feel like he gets a lot of calls. But, uh, you know, really, I, I, just a great job by by Dort. And I want to say this about Shea's game is the way that he's been able to um, really uh, maneuver the extra physical uh, defense that teams have been putting on him have, has been truly spectacular. Um, the way that he's been able to rely on on Josh and, and Lou right now um, and J-Dub, we didn't, you know, J-Dub didn't have a, a particular good game today, um, but the way that he's been able to rely on these other guys when he's getting this physical contact has been big because, you know, you, you're looking out there and yeah, he got 28 points, uh, but man, he was, he was getting hit a lot and hard and, you know, that takes a toll on the player. So, uh, you know, looking at that and, and seeing how teams are, are readjusting to Shea and playing that physical style on him is, is very interesting. But the key to that success is that when players, the physical players, are going off of of uh, uh, um, Josh Giddy and Lou Dort, these are going to open up the lanes for J-Dub, Lou Dort, and Josh Giddy to get into the lanes more. And we're seeing the success by the team's def um, offense and understanding what – what Coach D is doing and, and, and making them attack the hole because the success goes right back to Coach D and the way we run our offense and, and seeing Shea and Josh and Dor and J-Dub attack that hole and, and, and making other teams pay for taking their physical uh, defenders and putting them on Shea. Yeah, and you mentioned J-Dub, and yeah, not the, not a great offensive game for him, right? Not a good offensive game even, but Fuck what it. he Who did. Who cares, man? Right, but what he did for the team – as a unit, like with his rebounds, with his assists, like his ability to, to play within himself and then explode to go get those defensive rebounds. Defensive rebounds, like you mentioned earlier, is a, a big weakness. They're not just in this game, but when we're lacking a true center out there. And, and today, I liked how Jay Will came out and started. I thought he played really well for us, but I think he ended up with like 12 minutes, so limited there. Then we went with Kenny Hustle at the five, and that really didn't stick too much. And then Moose wasn't playing this game. So here we were with Baisley and Baisley wasn't like they just gave him the minutes. He earned them and he didn't earn them really. I think necessarily in his first run of minutes, it was like that second run of minutes. It was just mm -hmm. like, they're going to go with him. And he was defensively everywhere and he was in the right spots on offense. And then he wasn't getting stuck with the ball. He was making sure it moved out of his hands quickly and he was making the right plays. When you see all of that and you understand like, we don't need everybody to go out there and put up 12 points. Like, mm. we have a lot of games where that happens, where, like, you'll, you'll see Jay Will, Jay Dub, you know, Kenny. Um, everybody who plays will have a chance for double figures. This was just not one of those games. But as long as you competed and you competed the whole time you were out there, we needed you. And mm. everybody competed. It was one of those games where it was a gut check coming into the game. We understood it was the last game of a long road trip. We understood before the road trip started, when we got to New York, we would be tired and yeah. that we'd have to tap into something that the last time we were on a road trip and we, we weren't able to do. And we just got punched in the face the last time. This time we knew. We knew where we were going to get our energy and it wasn't going to come from our legs. We were going to have to tell ourselves that we weren't tired and we have to go out and play hard as we could. And I felt like, man, I felt like there was a minute where we almost let go of the rope. But we didn't. We landed a few punches and they did. Yeah, it, and it's it's learning that next gear is is a lot of these young athletes when you're playing this young in the NBA is you don't know what you're capable of doing yet. Um, so having a, a good vets out there teaching your guys uh, and and having that mentality like Kenny Hustle and and, and Lou Dort and Shea, getting these guys going and saying push yourself. And I, I look at how Coach D put up uh, Josh Giddy um, earlier in the season. Um, when when uh, um, uh, Shea would be out of the game, he always had Josh getting in the game, taking over the game, and, and, and really telling Josh to take over. Uh, you see that paying off now. Um, you know, Shea goes out of the game, and the offense goes through, you know, semi through Josh, and it's it's beautiful, guys. Um, what's everything that's happening right now is is truly spectacular. And you know, we're looking at our our wins right now. We're twenty one and twenty three. Uh, we're tied with the Utah Jazz, Phoenix Suns, and the Portland Trail Blazers uh, for that um, ninth spot. So, you know, like, it's exciting, man. Like, you know, half a game ahead of that is the Golden State Warriors, you know. And, 
to me, like this is this is a really good spot for this team to be in. Uh, especially, everybody knows when you're around a, a group of young guys, and when that's what young guys, young girls, it doesn't matter if you're coaching, um, if you're having a, a child uh, that's being coached, and it's like the light bulbs are going on in these kids, and all of a sudden they start believing in themselves. And they're like, "Yeah, we could win the championship here. We could do this. We could go all the way." And that's what we're seeing in Oklahoma City right now. Is these young guys are like, "Man." Look at all these things that we could do, and we're still not playing the best ball that we can play. Imagine when everything is get put together. We could we could be that sixth seed easy this year. And if that's the belief that system that they have, and that's what they believe in, man, like I I want to I want everything that we do to support that. Everything yeah. that we do, everything that this podcast is about, I want to support that. I want this this team to go as far and feel that they have the support that they want because Josh Giddy deserves it. Shea deserves it. Dort deserves it. J-Dub deserves it. Fucking A, man. Chet deserves it because he needs to see what this is all about, man. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's what's so important is, is all the love that we've gotten from Australia. For real. It's truly fucking spectacular, man. Like, I, I cannot say it enough. We, we can't even talk. We used to talk about all the comments and, and, and read all the comments that we used to get. But when you get 25, 30 comments, there's no way you can go through them all. Uh, especially when you have, you know, between two podcasts, you have, you know, 70 something, you know, yeah. it's, comments, man. There's, it's there's unbelievable. nothing. It's overwhelming. It's truly, and, and, and I have to say, is like all those people that, that don't comment, that like, or subscribe like we appreciate you guys like mm-hmm. we're not out, out here begging for likes or subscriptions like we don't give a shit about that stuff what we care about is this team and, and making sure that people understand that there is an adult podcast for the oklahoma city thunder out there because we were sick and tired of hearing children's podcast and now we're out here talking about the oklahoma city thunder in the most fucking adult way that we possibly can you know, when I was a child, I played with childish things. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And that's what this podcast is, baby. We're grown ups. We got hair on our dicks. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, we, we've stopped masturbating and uh, we have sex now. So, yes. We, yes. No, we haven't stopped masturbating. I, uh, I mean, stopped like, masturbating. I mean, yeah. yeah you I mean, can if you want. That's cool. But, <laughs> but anyway, guys. <laughs> We hope that we make you as happy as you make us. Let's put it that way. (laughs) But we, but we do. We we love the interaction. It means the world to us. We love. It really does, guys. We love that we feel like so many people out there have been looking for a podcast or looking for a group of friends or a group of people to talk about the thunder with that they wanted. They wanted something that meant more than what they had. And mm. we feel like we're we're kind of at the the center of this vortex of so many people saying like, "Hell yeah, man! We fucking love the Thunder." And that's what we want to be that's right it. here. That's it, and it's fun to watch these young men grow in front of us, uh, grow into you know adults. Josh, Giddy, Shay, Dort, uh, both uh, Jalen Williams is these guys are going to be so fun to watch. Uh, you know, you got Lindy Waters, Kenny Hustle, obviously is already a man. Uh, you got Trey Mann as Isaiah Joe Wiggins, Mike Muscala. I mean, Chet, all these guys that we have the privilege of watching and, and, and admiring their game and, and understanding their game in a whole deep new level is, is re- really what we're all about. And to be able to go on this ride with you guys, it's just icing on the fucking cake to us. Like, you know, I, I, I don't even know. Like, it's, it's like it, getting a face me, full of good, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, but appreciate you guys. <laughs> we um, love you. And, and by the way, we're doing this podcast <laughs> just after the game, guys. So we're a little bit uh, out there already. Yeah. No, no, no. We mean we mean everything we say, and we hope that he'll come back for <laughs> another round. <laughs> <laughs> just don't eat the icing. <laughs> you can you can do whatever you want with it. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you guys. Soon, we promise we'll be back and we'll be better than ever. We love you. Love you guys.